So, in this video, we're going to talk about moment capacity of beams that are unbraced. And so, for example, in this picture that you see in front of you here, we have a beam that is right here. And in this condition, it has brace points. These members coming into the side brace it, but it is unbraced. So, when we're talking about unbraced, we're talking about the, the distance, this unbraced distance between brace points. Okay, so in this case we have multiple unbraced lengths. This We want to make sure we don't confuse that with the total length of the beam. So the length of the beam is, is shown from support to support, but the unbraced length, there's multiple here, would be the distance between support points. And this is really important because uh, a beam that is unbraced will tend to fail um, in lateral torsional buckling, as is shown in this image, where if the beam, again, is not, assuming we have brace points at the end in this case, and the beam is not braced, as we put load on the beam, the center at section A wants to kick out or torsionally buckle off to the side. And the reason that happens is because, we, again, we have compression in the top of a beam and tension in the bottom. The top flange is functioning kind of like a column. And so a column, if it's, it has force in it, has a tendency to buckle where it's unbraced. When we put brace points in, so if we were to take this beam and actually brace it, say with a deck or something like that, the beam can then develop its full moment capacity. And so let's start with, the, the, with a fully braced member. For a fully braced member, the nominal capacity, this MN, is equal to the full plastic moment, MP. We talked about that in the previous video. This MP is equal to the yield stress times Z, where Z is the, the plastic modulus, and we look that up in a table. This condition also holds true if we have enough bracing. And so in our tables, in tables 3-2, what you'll see is some different values. And so what we're going to say is it's fully braced or if adequately braced. And adequate bracing means the distance between brace points, LB, is less than some value LP. And we'll look up in the table what LP is. And as long as we have brace points that are closer together than the LP, we can see the full moment section. So in our table 3.2 in the AISC manual, we'll see a shape. Let's take a shape, for instance, the W24 by 84. The f and we're looking at LRFD, so we're not really looking at these green columns here. We're looking at the blue columns. And when we look closely here, what we see is its full moment capacity, phi MP, is equal to 840 kip feet. And that is good so long as the brace points uh, for this beam, here's our LP, are, are closer together than 6.89 feet. Okay, so that's the first case. So we can basically say that if, if this beam is braced closer together than 6.89 feet, it's going to function as a fully braced member. What I'm going to demonstrate next is that when the moment, um, when the brace points exceed that 6.89, but are less than, say, this 20.3 number, we reduce our capacity down to another value, and then it drops off. So this is what we're looking at, and this is how we're going to use use this information. Let me summarize this below. So when the top flange is not braced, or that is to say the distance between brace points, LB, is less than this LP, which we find in table 3-2, then we have a condition when the nominal moment strength, MN, is less than this value MP shown in the table. And effectively, what we're saying is, if we're unbraced, we lose strength. So let me show you what that relationship looks like. And then we'll, um, in the next time we come back to this topic, we'll be able to use the design aids in the AISC tables. So graphically, here's what it means. It means that if our unbraced length is 0, 
we can develop the full moment capacity, the full plastic moment capacity MP. So MP at LB equals zero is its full strength. And we can maintain that full moment capacity for unbraced lengths up to a point where we reach LP. And again, LP comes from the tables and it's, it's documented for us. So right up to this point, we get a value, the full moment capacity. The second number we saw on the table above was this value, LR. So let's draw it out here somewhere, LR. And basically what it says is at some point LR, the moment capacity reduces down to some value MR. And what happens is it's linear. So as we increase the brace, unbraced length from LP to LR, we reduce strength. Beyond that point, what happens is it drops off, and this is beyond the, con beyond the scope of this class, but this is a complex, a complex function that defines how it drops off. So you can see, we, can, we might have a beam that has a full moment capacity of, say, you know, a thousand foot pound, foot kips, um, and as we make, have the brace points get further and further apart, we can lose quite a bit of capacity. And so what we can do with this, this curve is you can look at the brace points. So if we jump back up here and look at this beam, we go into the curve with LB, which is a dis the biggest of any of these brace lengths. We take that number, we would come into this here, we compare it to LP. If LB is less than LP, we can consider it fully braced and we can use the full VMP. If it's between LP and LR, we have to reduce the capacity somewhere between 840 and 8, 8, uh, 515 in this case, and that would be this relationship here, the MP to the MR. And then beyond there, we need to use some special tables to find out. So, in summary, when our distance between our brace points exceeds this value LP, we lose strength. The strength follows the curve shown. We can find the values for MP, MR, LP, and LR in, in table 3-2, and we can draw this graph. We can use an interpolation function to figure out if your LP is somewhere in the middle here. We can just graph it and figure out what our nominal capacity is. Or the second way we can do this is to use the charts in the AISC in their charts 310. Charts 310 graph uh, these curves for every different shape. And so we can use those charts to, to go in with our unbraced length, find the nominal capacity, and we're done. And so the exercise that would be really good to do from here is to take two different sh shapes, say a W10 by 100 and a W21 by 93, look up their values in table 3-2 and graph the two functions and see how the capacity of one um, compares to the capacity of the other as a function of unbraced lengths. Thank you.